Welcome back to Ghost Statesman TV. Earlier this week, Clayton Coffin had a chance to sit down with head baseball coach Mike Kinnison and get his story about being a lifer here at Delta State from his days as a player to now as a Hall of Fame head coach. This is what he had to tell us. Well, it seems like there was never a time I didn't play. Uh, earliest memories are, you know, playing uh, in the yard, playing at my house, playing with neighborhood kids. And so it was always kind of that culture and that environment around. Uh, you know, like most kids, I started playing Little League somewhere around the age of six or seven and haven't stopped since, really. Uh, but while I grew up uh, on a farm out in the country, uh, there was a athletic environment around our family. I had brothers and sisters who were athletes, and my dad was very uh, tuned in to athletics, even though as a farmer he... Uh, you know, had a different lifestyle. He loved athletics and teamed into that a lot. And so it was always something that was around in the environment. I grew up playing all sports, not just baseball, but all sports, and loved them all. And, uh, you know, was very hooked at an early age, no question. But I began playing baseball in those minor leagues around the age of six or so and uh, played all the way through. And, uh, you know, like I said, still play today. Well, uh, Coach Ferris probably wouldn't appreciate this, but at that time, when you were growing up, all you could see on TV was the Yankees. That was my era. That was when I, my formative years there in those uh, in the '60s, so to speak, as I was going through my, my growing cycle and all, and getting ready for high school. And uh, you know, the game of the week every week then was the New York Yankees, Dizzy Dean, Pee Wee Reese, and so that's what you saw. And so I grew up with the Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, Bobby Richardson era. I could tell you the exact lineup, who led off, who hit ninth, all the way through. You know, Elston Howard, catcher, Cleet Boyer, third, Tom Tresh in left field. So, you know, uh, because of the influx and what you saw all the time, you didn't have a tremendous amount of knowledge uh, of a lot of other teams. So, like a lot of kids at that age, I grew up with the Yankees and, as I said, were, was kind of locked into that Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris uh, duo and kind of idolized that. I always thought Bobby Richardson was a great infielder and, uh, you know, I admired what he did as well. Well, that was not uh, a glamorous story. I wasn't high profile. I went to a very small school, first of all. And uh, there wasn't a lot of recognition. I went to the local community college, which was Holmes Community College. I don't even think they had any baseball scholarships at that time. But actually went there uh, uh, with the intent of playing football and did for a little while, but ended up playing uh, and, and certainly was going to play baseball. You know, I loved all sports or I played all sports, but I loved baseball. That was a little different for me. It was a heartfelt passion. So even though I went there and played football, I ended up uh, you know, playing baseball. And uh, the, the story for me through high school, through junior college, was never one of who recruited me or who liked me or what scholarship opportunities they had. I walked on in junior college. I walked on at Delta State. Uh, thankful for the opportunities I had, but uh, it was always a situation for me of having to prove yourself, having to show somebody that you were, you know, worthy of what you could do and kind of earn your playing time. So that was the track I followed. Not happened until my later years here at Delta State, and I think uh, playing under Coach Ferris was the biggest influence um, in that. Just being in the environment here. And watching what he did every day, uh, I think maybe also I saw how much he loved the game and how much coaching uh, meant to him. I was a uh, guy who started off in engineering my first couple of years. And then I kind of shifted to math education. Uh, and that occurred when I finally began to realize, well, you know, I may want to teach and coach. But I think uh, Coach Ferris's influence uh, kind of shifted some things for me, and I began to reorient my thinking. And uh, perhaps as the later years of my playing career winded down, I began to realize, well, this is going to be over. And uh, I realized how attached I was to it. 
And I think that love of coaching just grew out of the love of the game that I had. And so probably uh, what would have been my uh, next to last year at Delta States, where I kind of reoriented my education, changed my major to math education, and uh, began to seriously look at coaching and teaching. My first coaching opportunity was immediate after my playing career at Delta State. Uh, I served three years at Lee Academy in Clarksdale. Great first year situation or first coaching stop for me. Great athletes to work with and a great environment around me as far as the community and people at that place. Uh, from there I served my next 11 years at Jackson Prep High School, which uh, had so many rewards and there were uh, a lot of good athletes and teams to work with there and kind of built my coaching career and, and philosophies and things there at Jackson Prep. Uh, after a time at Prep, I wanted to shift to public school coaching and I served for one year at Madison Central High School. Uh, felt like at that time that might well be the best uh, high school opportunity in the state at some time, and that probably has been proven to be true. But after one year there, uh, I had the opportunity to come back to Delta State, served for three years as Coach Marchant's assistant after his accident. Great friendship, great opportunity for me to work under him. And so three years as his assistant and then the past 16 years as head coach. Well, I think this team certainly has some special qualities, no question about that. It's early in the year and they've demonstrated already uh, that they care about each other. They have a good team chemistry. They're very supportive and encouraging. Uh, they like to compete. That's uh, another thing that I always look at that I think is kind of a common denominator in the good teams we've had. They love to compete. It's early and, and you know, you, as I said, you can't judge a team where they'll finish based on their first few, year, first few games, even though we've had some success. Um, another thing that stands out, though, is the competition they face now. Our schedule is so tough. And even compared to the early 2000 years, there's so many good programs out there and the regional, national competition level has really been enhanced. We've uh, shifted now to the Florida region where we go head to head with all of those great teams from Florida. But the Gulf South Conference is uh, as good as any conference in America. And the, even though every week you really are challenged, the thing I try and hold on to as a coach is that if you can survive this war, if you can survive the Gulf South Conference week in and week out, you're going to be well seasoned and you won't back up from competition if you're lucky enough to get into a regional. So uh, I've always felt like that if you can get out of this conference and get into a regional, then you got a great shot to play at a level that will continue through the regions to the World Series.